And joining me now for Pet Corner is pet doctor's Rebecca Koo to share the amazing work that's behind the making of a successful guide dog. <laughs> Welcome back, Rebecca, and oh, you can go back any time. You've got some friends. I have, aren't they gorgeous? They are just <laughs> absolutely delightful, and this one's here's going to help me read my notes today. Uh, do all guide dog puppies get to be guide dogs when they grow up? Not all of them. They do select them based on health aspects and temperament, and the best of the best get considered for the breeding program, um, but they do a pretty good job at making gorgeous babies. So what is the process to get a service dog ready to be, get, get ready for work? Sure, so they start right at the very beginning. They have an incredibly dedicated breeding centre who get these gorgeous babies um, as part of their breeding program and they are exposed to sights and sounds and toys and the staff there are incredible at the work they put in and it really shows in their beautiful dogs. From there they go out with volunteer puppy walkers of whom they're always needing lots of puppy walkers so contact guide dogs if you're interested wow. <laughs> and they get to go out in the community and get exposed to supermarkets and elevators and trains and shopping centers and then at about um, 12 weeks uh, 12 months of age they come into training so it's an intensive six month training program and then if they can graduate at that point they're matched with a client right and these puppies are getting TV experience they're they doing fantastic something that tastes amazing <laughs> on my hands right now because you're just getting stuck in there yeah. so how long does that usually take so it's about 18 to 20 months before they're out graduated and are working dogs because mm. they really need to know this stuff don't they, they really do it's important to get that all right. Is there a particular type of dog or breed that makes a good guide dog? Mostly they're using Labradors, Retrievers or First Crosses of the two. They do have some um, small number of German Shepherds and Standard Poodles and the Poodles are quite popular because they don't shed and they can be good for those um, people who are allergic to dog yes. fur. And they're really looking for that steady temperament, intelligent um, and you know trainable dogs that can help. So at what point in the, in the dog's care is you, is you, you, do you as a vet step in? I mean, yep. are you just there if the dog gets sick or injured? Or? We're right there from the beginning. So when their mums are due to have their babies, then we're on call around the clock because the mums and the babies are so special and, um, and valuable. And then we help out as we would with pets who are also well cared for, that they get their vaccinations and um, you know all the usual checks that they come in if they're sick. <laughs> is there different? Is there different um, sort of vet care for, guy, for for service dogs as there is to pets? Or? We do have some different factors to take into account. So just like the pets that we look after, they all get priority of care, and their welfare is the most important thing. Um, but it's, it is important that um, with working dogs, that they have to be able to perform their job. So their time out of work, or if they're taking certain certain medications, we have to factor that in as to whether it might stop them from working as effectively as they need to. Right, because they really they are working dogs. Aren't they? they are. So absolutely. how are service dogs different to pets when it comes to you know going to the vet? Yep. I take it they'd be better behaved. <laughs> we have some lovely pets that come in to see us, and we also have um, beautiful guide dogs who have a lot of training that goes into them. And with that, yes, they are lovely to look after and well behaved. But we do need, need to sort of factor in that they're in the public eye, so we're careful about the clipping and things that we might do. And also too that if they're to take steroids or medications that could affect their work that that might not be safe for them you know going through mm. so we do have to take a little bit of a different approach compared to a pet where it doesn't matter if they've got a funny haircut yeah. <laughs> and what about we as as the public I mean how should we treat guide dogs in the public because we shouldn't yes. just go up and pat them should we no so or let them these look out are working like dogs I know so when they have their jackets on or their harnesses those dogs are working so patting them is distracting them from their work and that can make it unsafe for the dog as well as the the client or the handler right. walking them. Okay, but at this stage, of course, we're letting them get <laughs> valuable people time <laughs> and we're having cuddles. Yes. We're teaching them a few things. Oh, they're so gorgeous. Thank and they do such a great, valuable service as well. They do. Thank you so much for bringing them in You're today. You're welcome. <laughs> and thanks so much to Guide Dogs Association for letting us have these gorgeous little puppies here. I'll tell you what, the whole crew has just been going goo goo. And for all your veterinary care, make sure that you contact the friendly team at Pet Doctors.